Here's a pair of needle nose pliers that have some rust and corrosion. I'm going to start by using some glass cleaner on a small segment of paper towel. Like that. I'm just gonna wipe the tool down. This is to really degrease it of any um, oil residue or film. And you can see it's it's picking up some of the gunk. Take some 100 grit sandpaper. Even after just sanding it lightly, you can already see all the oxide corrosion is gone. Next, we'll use electrochemical stripping. We turn on the variable DC power supply, and we're going to kick up the voltage. Cathode stripping rust away. I'm going to dial that up, and you see the bubbling has started. Pretty good. It's cruising. That'll clean the rust off. So if we remove the part here, I'm going to take a close look at it, and we see that the tips where the majority of the corrosion was that we couldn't sand off are starting to clean up. So we're going to give those a wipe down real quick with some paper towel that we were using to remove the sanding dust earlier. I'm going to wipe the blades off here. It has an integral wire cutter on it. This tool itself is very uh, useful for electroplating. Um, to manipulate the hanging wires like this that you attach the cathode to your part. Like we need a few more minutes in there. So we're just gonna pop that back in there and let her rip. I'm going to concentrate the activity on these end parts here where they're corroded, where the textured gripping surface is. Right here. I'm going to hold it like that. This only takes a few minutes. It's still cruising along. Electro cleaning. Rust removal with electricity in a sodium bicarbonate bath. Meg loves these blue-green colors that form with copper oxide. From yesterday, I produced quite a bit of this green pigment. So I saved it for Meg because she wants to put it in some art pigment. Meg says this process is pretty. We see that the corrosion bath has turned a dark color, which indicates some of the chrome alloy used in this tool have actually deposited hexavalent chromium or trivalent chromium ions into the solution. Those are our dark color. We also have some intermetallics with copper and nickel forming. Right now, I'm gonna take some acetone, 100% acetone nail polish remover and use some Q-tips to clean out parts here, and then we're gonna pop it back in this bath and strip it some more. It's my electrode, my anode. I see a lot of oxides on there. Meg asked me to save some of these oxides as pigments to mix with paint polymer. I render these pigments by just wiping off the oxide from the electrodes crudely like this. It's a little dark when it's wet like this, but it lightens when it dries. Let's see if you rinse it off there, it cleans a lot of that oxide funk off the nickel strips. I'm gonna actually reset this stripping bath with some fresh water and baking soda. All right, to make a new stripping bath, what I'm gonna do here is take some baking soda. This is industrial baking soda. Add maybe five or 10 grams there, something like that, and then water. Like that.
I'm gonna rerun that part in this fresh bath, another 20 minutes or so. All right, we see much more vigorous bubbling with this new bath, so. And pull the part out here, let it drip dry like that. Nice wipe down. It's kind of warm actually. I guess four amps was enough to really light it up. That's ready for a nice nickel plate. We're gonna take out our electrodes here. Just set them on this paper towel. I'm gonna grab a new nickel anode like this. I'm gonna make another addition to the nickel anode here by just taking a piece of nickel strip and wrapping the nickel like that around it. So now we've got a T-shape and we'll put a little crimp in it like that so that it can't move around. So this is our nickel plating bath. And what we're gonna do here is set up the anode. Now we're going to take the tool and we're going to dial the voltage way down over here. We're gonna do this at like one volt or so. We're gonna drop our part into the bath. We're gonna do a very, very slow nickel plate at about 1.6 volts. And we'll move the part ever so slightly closer to the anode to get better deposition. And we'll leave this for a few hours. Okay, so I added a little more nickel to my anode tree. Well, you can see that that helped get the current up to a tenth of an amp. I'm gonna leave it like that for many hours. Very, very slow bubbling. We're going for a gentle nickel plate. Now there's not a lot of separation there between the electrode and the tool. Now if you can tell, maybe an inch or so. And after a few hours, I'll come back and check on it and ro rotate it around backwards and forwards to get an even electro plate. So I'm going to regenerate the nickel bath a little bit here mid-cycle. I made a small nickel tree with five small nickel strips and what I'm going to do here is lower that into the bath like this and then you just want to make sure you get a good electrical contact that won't fly off like that. Crank up the current here for a second. We're gonna saturate the bath with nickel ion. You'll know it's working when you get up to around 12.8 volts. We'll even go to 14 like we're running on a car. This, and this will just absolutely saturate the nickel bath. And we'll run that for a few minutes until it turns a darker green color. Midstream here, by just taking the part out for a few minutes, it starts to rust because of the acetic acid and sodium chloride in the nickel bath. So it's absolutely important to rinse your part with deionized water as soon as you pull it out. I'm going to do some more plating once the bath is restored. Okay, I'm going to use a little piece of copper wire here to test the bath. So what we're going to do is electro deposit nickel on here and see if in five, four, three, two, one... And you can see right there, just right away, a nice nickel layer has formed on the copper just in five seconds of electro dipping at this potential. We're gonna take our tool and pop it in there and we'll see the same thing happen. Very rapidly, a layer of nickel will be deposited on the tool and you can see vigorous activity in the bath now. Currents up to two and a half amps, 14 volts. We'll pop it out, that was five seconds in there. We're gonna turn the part around, flip it over like this, let it run on the other side. And you don't wanna do it for more than a few seconds or you'll get irregularities around sharp points. But we can see it is layering the steel with nickel so we'll go ahead and continue the nickel plating, but we're gonna lower the voltage and increase the time. So we'll go ahead and dial back the voltage. And we can see looking at the nickel restoration electrode even here, it's already, it's making deposition. I mean, it's, it's creating an irregular texture on there. So we know the bath is working correctly. Also that copper wire test where the copper wire was easily quickly coated in nickel shows that nickel ions are being attracted from the anode to the cathode. What you're doing is you're, you're dialing this back down. You're dialing the voltage back down because at lower voltages, just, just like that, right? A very low level for a long period of time. What that does is it produces a very even strong, thin bonding layer of nickel to your tool that's better at corrosion prevention. I'm gonna turn up the voltage a little bit for a while. Seems to be making more even deposition. I'm gonna make a rinse bath out of this bottle since I have another one. I'm gonna take a razor blade and cut around the edge. I'm gonna set the 
side. All right, to radically speed up the plating, I cranked it up to three amps and 14.2 volts. This makes it super fast. I'm going to pull the pliers out like that, go over here, dip them in this water bath, dry them off, just like this. It turned out absolutely beautiful. All right, well, I'm regenerating the nickel bath, but you can see the tool turned out absolutely beautiful. Nice nickel coating. So. I'm going to take some of this Tri-Lube here, Outer's Gun, Gunnersmith Oil. And what we're going to do is we're just going to put a droplet right inside here. We're going to work, work that into the movement like that. And we're going to come down here at the bottom and we're going to put another droplet of that gun oil right there. We're gonna work that in too, just like this. We can see on the side there, the oil made it, the movement is extremely fluid and smooth now. I mean, you can just barely, barely move it. Nice articulation, perfectly lubricated. Now we're gonna take a small amount of this gun oil like this and just wipe down, wipe down the outer surfaces here. Put a thin film of this oil on the outside of the tool. Just like this, wipe the tool down. A thin layer of that lubricating oil all over the outside. And that now, and we can polish it. A quick polish, we don't need it. It doesn't have to be thick. Your nickel plating is corrosion resistant, so. There it is. Needle nose pliers restored. Thanks for watching.